This is May 12, 2014, and welcome to Catfish Weekly, along with Lyle Stokes, Chris Wallace, a.k.a. FUD, Paul Ragsdale, and myself, Chuck Davidson. Tonight, we got Jonathan Herden, the host of Maximum Catfishing. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Lyle, and uh, he gets started off asking Jonathan some stuff, and... Uh, I hope y'all all participate, get on chat, and uh, ask him some questions. I know y'all got plenty for him. Good evening, Jonathan. Glad to have you on the show. Thanks. How are y'all, fellas? You uh, understand the water level is pretty low down there where you guys are at. Yeah, the, the water level looks pretty good, but the, the flow, man, is just non-existent. We're, you know, we measure our stuff in CFS through the TVA, and... We're only getting about 7,000 CFS, and it's just it's just crazy still right now. So it's it's hard to do any drifting or anything, covering any ground. And if the wind's not acting right, which it hasn't been, it'll blow you off anchor quick. Now, are, are you uh, primarily fishing a lake, or are you on the river systems down there? I flop back and forth. Um, just depends on you know. I'm probably about six miles from the dam, and um, by water, I'm even closer than that. So. It's, I try to lake out. If it's not hitting on anything, I'll either lock through and, and go down and, and fish the river section. So so you're fishing current most of the time? Yeah, most of the time. Um, here lately, I've been trying to you know fish some, some pre-spawn areas, some spawning areas, heavy cover, stuff like that. And, and you know, it's kind of the wrong thing to do. It's against my better judgment most of the time to put out a double anchor in the main river channel like this, but you know, with little to no current, it's okay. And I'm just locking down the boat from the front and the back and seeing if I can fish some of these smaller areas. I see. I see. Um, it, 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 when you get to the point where there's very little current, are you actually dragging bait, or are you still have enough current where you can drift backwards? No, nah, you don't even have enough to drift backwards. You just have to put the nose down river, put a couple out the back, and just some light pencil weights, slinky weights, and just drag those baits. Yeah, I, I wondered about that. And we had situations like every time I go to the Ohio River, it's like that. But I understand the boys at the CR tournament are going to have some current this weekend, so that'll be excellent for them. Uh, are you still using skipjack and shad for your main baits down there? Let me tell you something. I kind of figured this out over the winter. You guys saw the big fish we were throwing down over the winter after Christmas until early spring, and before the skipjack started running. Um, everybody was at the very tail end of their of their skipjack supply, and it was it was getting kind of rough. What I found is these gizzard shad, these big gizzard shad, before they pushed down deep, were really bloody, and they were fishing, you know, frozen skipjack 50-50. I mean, I couldn't tell the difference on the bite. Um, but then, when the skipjack came back in, you started seeing that gizzard shad, shad bite fall off a little bit, and now the skipjack is kind of more prolific bite right now. But through the winter, it was the thing to be. It was the place to be. So I had a big piece of gizzard shad on any of your hook. Cool, cool. That's awesome. Um, circle hooks, I assume. Yeah, eight, ten out circle hooks. Um, you know, with a good offset. I'm an offset guy. Some guys don't like offsets. I'm a, I'm an offset guy. Yeah, uh, Jason Bethina was up the other day, and him and I was talking about that, and and uh, we was actually comparing some of the the tackle that I have versus what he has and uh, we actually uh, took some hooks out that, that I was showing him that I use and bending them to get the amount of offset that I like on them and, and you know it's really close to the same thing he was looking for and by the time we got done we had a product that we both could feel good about. Yeah and when Chris was down here um, he can attest to this I was trying out some new, some new circle hooks and they were, they were real heavy gauge they actually were saltwater hooks and and they, they, they work to an extent, but um, we found a, a couple of, we had one that freight trained Chris on his side of the boat, and I don't know how that fish didn't hook up, so I think the, the gauge on was a little too heavy, so I went back to my standard um, four times strong Gamagatsu on um, eight and tens. I see, I see. <clears throat> the um, the uh, boat you have now, I seen it at the Monsters last year, that's still the same boat you're fishing out of? Yeah, the ProCat 240, the 2014 model. Um, CR came on as the main sponsor of the show last year, and that's what we'll be using throughout the throughout the, the first season of Maximum Catfishing. Well, that, was a, that was an absolutely beautiful boat down there. It was on display for all of us to look at, and, and uh, I just drooled all over it. So if there are any marks on it, they'd be me. Yeah, um, 
the <laughs> the um, the black I think is where it's at. So if we get a new one, that's that's where I want to go is black. I've seen Ryan Casey's and I saw uh, I think it was Jody's boat down there at the Monsters and it was all black and I kind of like that. And that might be a little hot in the summer, but it looks good. Yeah, it did. It was beautiful. I haven't seen it since. I'm sure you have it all decaled up and wrap or whatever on it, and I haven't seen it since then, but it was just awesome down there at the show, and, and I know that the, you brought it down there to, to uh, Aaron's with uh, nothing on it and had to rig it up and get it ready to fish by the next day. Was, I know Dave was scrambling to help you get it ready to go. Yeah, man, those guys down there at Bass and Moore, we pulled into their shop back there where they put fish finders and stuff on, and they were nice enough. We stayed there until about 1 o'clock in the morning um, the day before practice day and, and and we're trying to put everything we had on it and all the Lorance, all the Driftmaster stuff on it and it worked out good. And that and that's the kind of people we have in catfishing that, that some of the other uh, sports don't do, you know. We have some of the best people in the in the industry and they're all friendly and helpful and, and to work with each other to make things work. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you something real quickly, the monsters on the Ohio, I don't know about you and I know the I know the commercial fishermen have really really raped to pillage that water, but the, the whole town, the whole area up there in Owensboro, and Aaron Wheatley itself, I felt like I was at a big time BASS Elite Series tournament, 100 something boats in there and out of there as fast as they were without a hiccup, that was a, that was a great experience for me. Well, we've, we talked about that several times on the show, and Aaron does an outstanding job, he's a very good guy, and we fish, Cindy and I fish all over. Uh, you know, every year, but last year was really extreme for us. But uh, I've fished a lot of the big tournaments in different places, and I've never fished a more professionally run tournament than that is. Uh, with that being said, we try to do a pretty good job with our stuff, and, and uh, Brad Kilpatrick does a really good job with his. But uh, with what Aaron's working with and the, the support he's got in Owensboro, uh, it is really it's an amazing thing that they do that. Yep, and speaking of y'all stuff up there, that's what we're looking in season two to get up that way and and get up and go over towards Brad's area and see if we can get a couple of that Midwest stuff. Because on the Maximum Catfishing Facebook page, we get a lot of behind the scenes questions. When you coming up here? When you coming up here? So that's season two right there. Speaking of the Maximum Catfishing, uh, are you all done with Surrey season one? Uh, we have two more shows. Um, we got a show that we got just pretty much zeroed on. I mean, that's fishing. It happens. We went to Chattanooga. We put in below Nickajack. Went all the way up to Chattanooga. Came all the way back and only caught two fish. The wind was howling and we had little to no current. So we're going to try to do that one over. And then this weekend, we're going to be at the um, Sea Arc Tournament, the Owner's Invitational Tournament. And we're going to do a little little fishing there, a little filming there. And then that should be it. Back to the editing room we go. Well, cool. I'm glad to see you going down there. That Sea Arc Tournament's a is a good event. They had it in St. Louis a couple of times. I was fortunate enough to fish one of them, and and uh, they they do a really good job with what they do. And and uh, I'm sure if you haven't met him, uh, a friend of mine, Doug Rice, will be down there. Uh, yeah. He usually MCs the stuff, and Doug is quite a tool in himself. But he, he is a great uh, supporter of Sea Arc boats, and they should be feel real proud to have him on board with what they got. Yeah, they're they're a good bunch of folks. They've always you know been helpful whenever I've had any questions about the boat or whatever. And they're you know they're they're one of the the, the first um, to get into into the boat side of catfish. And there's a lot of other stuff coming out right now. And I think all of that's good for the sport because that means we're getting recognized. Oh, I agree. I think that is 100% correct. Uh, the more of them that get involved with that, the better it's going to be for all of us. And uh, in the end, the strong will survive, and the rest of them won't. But uh, Sea Arc's got a a pretty good name in the industry, and they uh, they have a lot of support behind them. But they're they're people that uh, that have their boats and stuff, so uh, you know they're they're just to deal with. Well, listen, I don't want to take up the whole show. I can ask you questions all night and visit with you, but uh, I'll I'll pass you off to Chris and let him get some some hits in on you. And thanks again for being on the show with us. All right, man. Thanks. Hey, how's it going, John? Pretty good, buddy. How are you, man? Oh, I'm doing all right. Uh, first off, before I get started, we got a question on the Catfish Weekly website. Um, Big Catfish wants to know what your opinion is, opinion is on uh, why it seems like catfish will just turn on and then he'll turn off. Like you'll catch a lot of catfish in one time and then it sort of shut off or whatever reason, you know. 
Um, I've, I've seen it time and time again, you know, I'm discounting the barge bite, we'll put that to the side, but just, you know, whether you're drifting or you're anchoring or whatever, um, I can't really tell you. I know I get in there and, and maybe sometimes the fish are schooling up and they're just schooling through there, but predominantly where I'm fishing, I'm finding fish to just sit behind current breaks. So um, if they're in there, they're in there. If they're not, they're not. But yeah, I've, I've seen it a lot of times where they just, you know, all of a sudden they turn on and, and, and get going good. I'm not one to get into the, the whole litter tables or anything like that. Now, I do really, really believe into, in the whole barometric pressure deal. Um, when a front comes through, there's some times where you just get that hour right when that pressure just starts moving, whether it's going up or down. I mean, it doesn't matter which kind of front it is. Um, comes through there for like that good hour, man, you'll get, a, you get an awesome bite like that. All right. Yeah, so when I came down, I came down and I fished on the, on the show with you. Um, yeah. You know, we had... Um, you know, a little bit of the conservation thing that I'm going to get on a little bit, but like when I was on the boat with you in that stretch of water, by the way, um, Jonathan, if people don't know, lives not on Gunnersville, but I could go out in his front yard and throw a rock and hit it, you know, so it's close enough. I mean, he's right there. So it's a beautiful area. I mean, I've never seen anything like it down there. Um, Looking at his fish finder when we're out there, I'm, I was really just, I haven't been on a lot of different waters where I've seen that many fish. You know, I mean, when he, when he was on the Ohio River, what did, what did you see compared to the Ohio River that you see at places like Gunnersville and Wheeler? I mean, yeah, that's I'm what a, I noticed. I'm a, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. This isn't down in the Ohio River fishery by any means, so all you guys up there, don't don't think I'm talking bad about it. But from a conservation standpoint, I mean, I can really see why you guys up in the in the in that area are really up on your soapboxes beating the war drums because it's sad that a fishery that's that nice up in there is just is just thin with fish, and it's you know it's all due to that commercial fisherman, and I could spend three shows on this. Um, you know, those guys got to make a living. But they're just raping our fisheries, and I hope that these laws that they're putting in place up there really, really do something. It's going to take, you know, five or ten years for it to start showing a difference if they start enforcing those laws. But man, it's just, it's just, it's just not nearly as plentiful as I see on all the other rivers that I'm on. Now, when I was on your boat, I just looking at your fish finder, all I could do was just dream that one day the Ohio River would look like that. You know, I mean, it was very. Night and day different for what I see. Well, and I think with you know guys like Wheatley and, and and all the other guys that are on there, you know Steve Douglas, a lot of people like that are trying to champion the cause. I think it will be again. It's it's, it's nice to see we have some people kind of save it for us because there's a medium there between us and the commercial fishermen, but it hasn't been met. It's just been raped and pillaged for so long that it's going to take a while. Yeah, there definitely needs to be a lot done. Probably more than even what's being done right now. But uh, you know we got to take what we can get and work on it and take it a well, step at a time. I don't I don't want to seem too controversial here, but I'm gonna just shoot straight from the hip. I hope they didn't appease us with a bunch of laws that they don't plan on enforcing on the backside due to the good old boy network up there. And that's my really really you know concern is is that they actually start going out there and doing that kind of stuff and, and enforcing those things and and caring about our our catfish fisheries because. If not, I, I just really hope they didn't say, here's your bunch of laws, let's put them on the books, but we don't have to enforce them. Like maybe the catfish guys will shut up. But I know with guys like Wheatley and other guys out there, that's not going to happen. So I'm really curious to see how that works in the coming years. Yeah. All right, talking about uh, Catfish Weekly a little bit. Um, the show itself, can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to create the show? Uh, what channel it's going to be on? When the first season is going to come out? Yeah, let me let me. It's a it's kind of a funny funny story how how the whole Maximum Catfish came around. As you guys know, I was with Bass Pro Shops for for many years um, down in Georgia, and I used to go around to all the different stores giving seminars and stuff. And usually it was with the during the boat shows and the and the um, fishing spring classics and stuff sales that they had during the spring, early February, March, January, those times of the year. And when I would go there, of course, I could never get up on the tank being in the wheelchair. And plus, I don't think they want me slinging eight and ten ounce weights around in those glass tanks anyway. But um, I'd be down in the front and I'd give my give my seminars and stuff. And when some local guys would come up there, it would be me and you know 
whether it was whether it was Bill or or KVD or you know any of the top bass fishermen um, would be in there. We kind of pile around and rub elbows and just kind of talk while the other guys, the local guys, were doing their thing. And I struck up a, a kind of a friendship with Timmy Horton. And a year after year, he'd come back and we we'd talk and have a good time. And we were talking about his show after Timmy Horton Outdoors kicked off, and he said, "Man, we'd love to do another show. Um, what do you think about some some along the lines of your catfish stuff? Would you be able to do that?" And man, I just took it run with it. I went to all the sponsors and told them what we were doing. Uh, he'd already been on World Fishing Network. They took a look at our pilot that we did with Jason Bridges, who, by the way, just just knocked it out of the park when we fished with him. And um, it just went from there. We're sitting in front of you guys talking. So on World Fishing Network, when when is the first season going to come October. out? October. It'll start in October. Um, you'll see us on World Fishing Network, and and we're going from there. It's going to be cool to kind of see all of my friends and all of my, you know, the people that are in the industry that are going to be on the show, um, you know, getting some props for, for all the skin they've laid in the game. Now, with that said, there was a lot of people that I wanted to be on the show, um, and I haven't changed the website because I'm still trying to figure out a way to, to work that out. You know, some of the big names in the game um, that are on the website, and due to some sponsorship issues where we had conflicting sponsors where we couldn't, um, we had no compete clauses in there for the show. I couldn't really get them on the show, um, you know, in their boat. It's not, this is a bass fishing where we can just jump up on the front of anybody's boat and start popping casts. Everybody, you, as you know, in catfishing has their boat set up for the way that they like to fish. So it's really hard for me to take somebody that loves to drift fish and does it like nobody's business to get in my boat where I precision anchor all the time and have it set up a lot different. So we're having some issues there, but other than that, um, I hope I can get them ironed out by season two. Okay. Like, what are some of the some of the guests that you're going to have on for season one? Uh, season one will be, you know, yourself. We were you, we went out and caught some good fish, and I even found a way when I was editing the other day to put that that fish catch that we caught when we got range and winded out of the, the first day. That big 63 pounder in there, so that looks real good on that throwback we did. Um, we've got George Young and Kerry Long. Of course, my right hand man Gary Turner's in just about all of those. Um, we've got some other people that we've we've got in there that I'm going to kind of keep secret until it until it comes out. Bill Dance was on an episode. Um, you know, Jason Bridges was on an episode. And I want to talk about that episode for a little bit. Um, man, we were getting normally about 30,000 CFS that time of year. And when we got ready to plan this thing to go up fishing, it was July, and we had 203,000 CFS. For all you Tennessee River folks, that's fast. I mean, that's really fast. And we ended up catching, you know, one fish at 60, one right at 70, and another 30 pounder. I mean, three fish, you know, right there at 140 pounds was awesome in that kind of current. And there was log jams and everything else coming down the river, and he helped us knock it out of the park. So props to him on that one. All right. What would you, uh, you know, what would you say you guys do on the days where the fishing doesn't cooperate and you're trying to film an episode? You know, how do you go about handling that? And it's not so so much of a of a stressful situation when I'm somewhere on the Tennessee River where, you know, we're just gonna go back to the house that evening, an hour drive, and, and come back out and you know go to go to Watts Bar or Ch Chickamauga or Nick and Jack or somewhere like that, but when I get way up in your neck of the woods, you know, up on the high river and even the father up in there, um, way out on the east coast, it's kind of nerve-wracking, but as you know, we got out there and we got some windy conditions when you were down here, and you know, where I had to, I couldn't even anchor, I just had to nose the boat into the mud, and, and we were fishing down ledges and, and catching all sorts of, of good bites, but we weren't getting on the fish, so you just got to do what you got to do, it's kind of like tournament day, but there's a lot of pressure when I've got camera in and everything else on the, on the clock, and and it's it's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you guys won't see on TV. But man, I was sweating bullets a lot of times because that's why they call it fishing. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think right now. I had something else. Uh, I can't think of it right now. So if uh, if uh, Chuck wants to ask you some questions or Paul wants to ask you some questions, I'll go ahead and hand it over to him. If I think of anything else, I'll get back with you. All right. What's going on, Jonathan? What's up, buddy? What's happening? Hey, uh, on all this footage y'all been shooting, uh, 
How close are y'all to having a good blooper um, <laughs> edition? Well, I can't, say it, I can't say it on here, but if anybody's ever on Facebook and Gary Turner's on there, ask him how to pronounce the word skipjack. It'll, <laughs> it'll just keep it going. But you know that story, but I won't get into that. But anyhow, man, there's, there's a lot of times when we get these fish and we put them in the live well, before we release them, I like to do the bump in and bump outs. And that's when I say, you know, um, stay tuned for more Maximum Catfishing. And then it goes to commercial. I say, welcome back to Maximum Catfishing. Um, and, and it comes back into the show. But when I'm doing those and I'm holding a 60, 65, 70 pound fish, man, after about the 50, 11th time, he gets, he gets rough. And I mean, I've, that's where a lot of the bloopers come in. You know, I did have one where I backlashed a reel so bad that I thought I was going to have to take it apart and get the line off. I mean, that's just how bad it was. And I, they were like, you want us to edit that out? I said, no, that's fishing. Just leave it in there and I'm going to keep it real with everybody. So there's always, you know, certain stuff. I haven't had any Bill Dance moments yet, but, you know, we've come close. All right. Um, you know, we, we've had our times where we just come up and get in the boat and go out and have good times and, uh, I see a lot of photos on Facebook where a lot of your friends from uh, over in Georgia come over and all this. So far this year, how many personal best uh, have you been able to get people on by being on Gunnersville and Wheeler into your boat this year? Wow, man. I, I can't count them on all my fingers and toes. I know that. Um, that's, that's the guy in me coming out. I could be out there and get these guys to come over here. And every time a rod goes down, I could try to shoot them my elbow and, and grab the rod. But that's not me. You know, I like to get down there and watch people get on these big fish. And I think probably, I think a good 12 or 14 um, personal bests out there. And, you know, I've had probably, I can't tell you the many fish over 50 that we've caught out of here. This is just, this is one of those lakes that everybody likes Wilson and Wheeler and Pickwick. Gunnersville kind of gets a gets a little bit of a you know push to the side, but you know as I know, you know Leanne caught her personal best out here when we were fishing back a few months ago, and it's just got some big fish in it. Y'all's tournament next weekend ought to be real good. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, we're trying to get a good turnout. Um, on your uh, season two. Um, what kind of areas do you plan on covering? Are you, are you going to try to get on out, um, you know, Kansas? Are you going to try to get on out? Are you going to try to do any James River stuff, anything like that? Yeah, we want to hit the James, the Potomac. Um, you know, we've got some Mississippi, lower Mississippi River stuff that we've already done, and, and, you know, pretty much all the way down to Kentucky Lake on the on the, on the the Tennessee River we've done. And I really want to get out there and, and get up to, you know, the Missouri area over into Kansas. Even on up way north on the border and catch some of those big town catfish. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Um, all right, Paul, uh, you got anything for him? Yeah, I was curious. A lot of people doesn't, don't know that uh, Jonathan's in a wheelchair, and I'm kind of curious uh, if he feels like that, that keeps him from getting the maximum amount, or if that's just... No, not really. Um, it's kind of all how bad you want it. These two guys over here, Chris and, and Chuck, you know, know firsthand that I don't care how I got to crawl, flop, flip, climb, jump out, whatever I got to do to get in and out of that boat, I'm going to fish it. I, like you said, I can look right out my window here and see that river, and it's nothing going to keep me from it. So it's just all how bad you want to do something. Yeah. And as far as the boat goes, um, I try to set up the boat, you know, how I like it. I, I would love to have a, a big, nice rod rack going across the back and all the chrome and looking nice and fancy, but just can't reach it from my seat. So, you know, David Ashby came in there and, and really set the boat up where I could reach everything and, and get the most stuff. Now, you know, it does hinder me when I'm, you know, trying to throw the anchor and stuff like that. You know, I can do it myself if I need to, to pull, the, pull the anchor up with the anchor ball and all that. But, you know, that's where my good friends come in and, and, and really help out and, Good thing it's a team sport because without that, you know, that there are stuff to be honest with you that does hinder me, but you know, that just if I get a little pissed off when I'm fishing, it helps me fish better. <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty much all I, I just I had to ask, and I know I didn't know you was in a wheelchair until I got looking on your page, so that's kind of yeah, crazy. most people don't because everything we're shooting is you know from here up, and 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 you know, they see me sitting down holding up a big fish or whatever. And 
And it's kind of like when me and my wife go to the gas station. They're like, look at that jackass. He's making his wife get out and pump the gas. They don't really pay attention to the wheelchair lady in the back of the truck. <laughs> So if we get knocked off the air, then we get knocked off the air. But um, uh, you you want to go with the uh, giveaway yet, Chris? Yeah, I can or, talk a little bit about. Um, we're gonna let everybody know that basically starting now until the end of June um, to hold up any catfish with just a just a piece of paper that says catfishweekly.com or catfish weekly on it um, and, and we're going to give away two of these 50 pound Rapala scales just random randomly pick two of the pictures at the end of the end of the month of June and we'll give away two of them you can post them to either uh, our Facebook group or our Facebook page on catfish weekly um, also, we're you know we're trying to ask that you know we're really trying to get out there and and get support from all of our anything that we post. Uh, if you could share it, you could like it on the on the YouTube videos. If you go to them and look at them and make a comment and like them and and you know hit the thumbs up button, things like that, that'll help us get uh, a little better exposure out there and people to you know like YouTube or whatever might feature a video or something like that. That would really Help us get Catfish Weekly out so people can see it. Um, if you're out at a tournament and and you don't mind speaking in front of people, you know, ask the tournament director if you can, you know, throw a mention about Catfish Weekly out there Mondays at eight o'clock uh, Eastern, seven Central. Um, just anything that you can do to help us uh, really get out and and to the masses and help us spread uh, what we're doing here. If you enjoy the show, especially, you know, I think other people would if if they knew about it. Some people just don't know yet, but uh, as you can see, Chuck sitting there holding up that 50-pound Apollo scale. We got two of those, and uh, it's Catfish Weekly. It's just us uh, that's going to give those away. Uh, so you got you got all the end of this month and all the way to the end of June. You know, post a picture of any any catfish. It doesn't have to be a giant catfish. You can catch yourself the smallest catfish you've ever seen and post yourself a picture with it, and you might get chosen there, but. That's going to be a bad deal if we get Doug Rice and Bill Parfit throwing in them 22-inch <laughs> two, two uh, channel cat they turn in in these tournaments sometimes. Hey, and I'm going I'm to say it right now. You can you can enter as many times as you want. So if you catch a ton of fish and you want to, you know, have that many chances to win, you know, just put it in there, put a picture with that uh, Catfish Weekly thing and... One stipulation: no pay lake fish. Yeah, no pay lake ah. fish. Yeah, I, we had, we did have recently, and there, and I do want to go ahead and say this too that uh, we we'd prefer that no advertising be posted on any of our pages on Facebook uh, unless it's done by us. But especially don't don't advertise for a pay lake and put pictures up of pay lake fish, uh, or you'll see exactly how I'll handle that like I did with the last guy. Uh, well, he got banned and... Don't let the lures flick you. Yep. Yeah. I will, I will, uh, I'll delete that post and ban you. I'm, we don't support pay lakes. Um, you know, I mean, there, I, there are good pay lakes out there that only stock, you know, farm-raised fish and stuff like that. And honestly, we don't have a problem with those, but just as a general consensus, we just don't allow advertising and, and the support of pay lakes so just to make it easy don't do it but uh so Jonathan that means no pay lakes for you <laughs> yeah, go ahead Chuck okay um does everybody um want you want to Wrap it up and give their. Uh, I've got a question. I want to ask, talk to Jonathan about. Jonathan, when when you was talking a while ago about going to the border, are you talking about going up uh, around Brad Duratory on the Red River and, and uh, jumping up there and trying to catch some of those monster channel cat with Brad? 
Yeah, I had, I had Brad um, come on the show with, I think he was on an episode with David Ashby, and we talked a lot about his book and talked a lot, a lot about the similarities between um, what he does on the river compared to us blue cats and flathead fishermen guys, and, and there's a lot of similar stuff, but um, he just has those huge catfish up there, and, you know, we'd like to go up there and shoot some with him in his area, as well as we kind of kick the idea around of going north of the border a little bit and get up in there and, and catching some of those really, really big ones. Um, as well as I like to go over to the right a little bit and, and get with, you know, some of those people that I'm a flatheader by trade. I mean, that's what I started when I was little. We didn't have nothing but big flatheads in, in Georgia, and, and that's what I like to do, and that's my that's my forte in catfishing. I like to go over there to the, you know, the Minnesota area and places like that to have those big flatheads as well. So that's kind of what we're looking to do and kind of, you know, just make a one big loop all around the, the northern central part of the, the, the country and come back down. Well, I can tell you firsthand, if you go up there and you get uh, to fish with Brad and Brad Durick Outdoors, it, it'll be a great time. We was up fishing the uh, Cats Incredible Tournament up there last year, and, and uh, Brad's an outstanding guide. He, he takes care of his people really well, and, and he knows that river, and there are some absolute giant channel cat in that river. Uh, and Brad's also very... Uh, informed about uh, the Red River up around the Lockport Dam, and I assume when you talk about going north, you're uh, further yet than that would be where you was headed, because yep. as far as I know, that's uh, the, the, the the place to go for the monster channel cats on that river. Yeah, you you know, I catch one 12 pounds down here anywhere, and I think I've done something, so I get on something big up there, man, I'll be grinning like a little kid. No, they, and them things, this fight is unbelievable, though. how how those channel cat put up a battle in that current and stuff, and and uh, you'll have a really good time, and Brad will do you a great job. I know you we, we all have a blast. Uh, that'd be an awesome time, I, and I know um, from what we've done last year, everybody likes to catch the big fish, the blues away 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds, but um, the biggest tournaments that I'm seeing in the last couple of years uh, come from the channel cat tournaments. Uh, if, if we have a tournament in St. Louis and it has 20, 30, 40 boats, uh, that is a huge deal, and that's about the average on the Illinois River or even north up around Keokuk and Burlington, places like that, where they have all their channel cat fishermen. They just flock in there in groves. Yeah, and it's 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 a it's a cool thing for our sport, you know, because I don't I don't care what kind of catfish you're catching. I just want to see the sport in general grow, and that's one of the big things on the show. Is is I don't I don't care to be you know do this just for personal fame or anything fortune or anything like that. Um, I just really want to be a, a not a voice, but just a, a portal to show what what we have in catfishing. That's why I tried to do a few tournaments, um, show the tournament aspect of it as well, and just show that the the, the the fisheries and everything around here, you know, from all over the country are, are good fisheries. We have a lot of people that are into the sport. It's an untapped resource for these sponsors. And hopefully, they'll see that and start putting some more support into the stuff that we like to do. Yeah, I agree. Now, do you ever think that, that um, and, and I'm hoping that it don't, but do you ever think that catfishing will get to the point where crappie and bass fishing is? I don't think it'll get BASS Elite Series status, anything like that. But I do, I do think it'll be to the, to the, you know, the, the crappy USA level, or, or maybe like the redfish tournaments that they have down in, in the Gulf and stuff like that. But there's a lot of money into it. Um, but I don't, I just don't think it's going to be, you know, bass fishing popular. But I would like to see it where it can be worth our while to be able to travel to different parts of the country, experience the different fisheries, let them challenge you because you've never been there before and still be able to have enough money in the purses to, to make it where at least you can break even, you know, to, to an extent, because I think that's what's keeping us from growing, and it's nothing against any of the tournament directors of, of Cabela's or Bass Pro or anything like that. It's just we need more support for the sponsors to be able to make that happen, and that's that's where it takes. You know, you got a lot of people that say, I don't ever want it to get that big. I want to be able to go catch my fish, and I don't want it to get so popular that I can't go to my favorite hole and go catch fish. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Those are the purists, and I kind of have to agree with them. But for the tournament aspect, I love competing. You know, I can't go out and play football or basketball. This is my deal, and I want it to get big enough where we can, you know, have enough big enough purses to be able to make it, you know, worth our while to be able to travel all across the country. 
Well, from my perspective, and you may not agree with this, but one of the one of the things that I see holding the tournaments down from getting any larger at this particular time is the amount of corporate sponsors that we have uh, in tournament fishing, and it's getting better. I'm not saying that it's not, because it, it is getting better, but we're um, the bass tournaments. Um, when they started that, you know, years and years ago, they had some people that really set that up and promoted it correctly. And uh, catfishing uh, is overcoming a um, backwoods type uh, uh, outlook, the way people think about guys that fish, and, and the the people wearing their their jerseys with their sponsors on them, and, and having the nice boats and looking. It doesn't have to be a big boat as long as it's clean and, and fit. If you look professional, that's better for the sport. Do you agree with that? I do, and I don't expect anybody to go out there and pay $150 for a jersey um, and put sponsors all over it, get approval to put sponsors all over it and everything else and have the, the top of the line, the biggest, baddest boat out there. That's not what catfishing is about. But I do agree with you about the Billy Bob theory um, where everybody thinks we're a bunch of Billy Bobs and overalls with no shirts on. Um, just out there catching catfish because I'm going to be honest with you, I must have approached 500 sponsors with that the show idea when I was first starting before I had any footage or anything like that, and they're like, "Are you catching them with your hands?" I mean, that's that was the first thing they went to was a bunch of noodling crap, and then right. after that, you know, it was just really hard to get my foot in the door as a cat fisherman. You know, if I would have been a bass fisherman, you know, I could have played the whole disability angle and went in there and got a little niche show and everybody would have been all over it. But for catfishing, when we even told you we were catching trophy catfish, they're like, do what? And it was really a stigma, like you said, that we had to, I had to overcome just to get my foot in the door. And I, would, I, do, I do that with the uh, tournaments when I'm trying to get sponsors for Twisted Cat Outdoor Tournaments. Uh, that is the first thing and the biggest obstacle that we have is overcoming the the, like you call it, the Billy Bob Outlook because, you know, that's that's what they think about. And then when you take videos or pictures and show them of uh, the way people have changed and, and grew, are trying to grow the sport, they come at you a little bit different, but you, you still have that obstacle to overcome every, with every sponsor that, that you go after. Well, it's all about that. It's all about that mighty dollar, and I want to tell you something. This kind of really changed the whole outlook and my whole approach to sponsors after I sat down and talked with him. The first night that I met Bill Dance up in Memphis when we did our shoot with him and George Young and Carrie Long um, in Memphis last year, we sat down to dinner, and the first thing he said is he handed me some paperwork, and he stuck in front of me and said, "Read right there, Jonathan." And there was a there was a, a retailer fishing magazine that was, you know put out to all the retailers out there so they could see what the next big trend in bass fishing lures and stuff and what was coming up for the season that they should stock in their stores. And there was a study done um, in 2012 and it showed the number of bass fishermen in the United States, cat fishermen, you know, hybrid fishermen, striper fishermen, and bass fishing was 10 million. Cat fishermen was 7.5 million in that article. And I'll post it on my Facebook page when we get done. And then below that then that was your pan fishermen and your crappy fishermen and everything else so there is enough of us in the united states to really make an impact financially on the books of all these companies if they'll just tap into it so that's what we're trying to do is show them what's available out there and hopefully they'll start coming our way so we can have you know more chances to compete with bigger purses uh, that, that's great i think i think you're on to something with that and, and i know that uh uh, people are, are getting better in the tournament. People are, are trying to get things to look a little more professional, and, and I really think it's made a, a big impact on the sport. And uh, uh, guys like you that are helping us promote it will, will continually to get things done uh, in a more professional manner. Chris, did you have a comment you wanted to make? Yeah, I was wanting to jump in a little bit and add on to that. I think right now, uh, I, Catfish is growing, and we're in that stage, I believe. <laughs> where these companies that are coming in and they're sponsoring us and, and they've not done this before, they've not came in and did sponsorships for cat fishermen, you know, they've, they've strictly done bass fishermen, crappie fishermen, walleye fishermen, whatever. Um, you know, like, like Jonathan's saying, like you're saying, we definitely, as the sponsored person, you need to make sure you do everything that sponsor wanted you to do. You want to present us as, as good as possible so they say, yeah, you know, we had a good experience with this guy 
you know, we're going to expand upon that a little bit next year or the year after that and and really push us as as tournament anglers and things with them with them sponsors to a different level than what they were thinking to begin with. I mean, if they were thinking, you know, it might be okay, we'll give it a shot. You want them to you want them guys at the end to be thinking, "Holy crap, you know, I've never had a bass fisherman do all the stuff this guy was willing to do for me." You know, I, I want to make sure that we're expanding upon this. We're doing more with these guys next year. You know, really, really push it, push it for them. You know, I mean, make it the best experience that, that you could for them. I think is what you need to try to do. Yeah, and I I agree with you because holding up big fish at a tournament is not the 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 epitome of of taking care of your sponsor. It's it's going into these small events and and promoting them. Coming up with ways to get stuff going on, you know, whether it's just a little tournament you put together, or you, you know, you go visit the Cub Scouts and you get on the news. I mean, whatever you can do to get any kind of, of media impression, whether it's you know just old school newspaper, social media, TV, whatever you've got to do to get your sponsors out there, that's what they want to see. And like you said, if we show us, show them as catfish, and we're going to work hard for them, then that's what they're going to keep coming back and try to give. You know, sponsorships to, to some of our peers and stuff like that. You're always going to have that bad apple that's going to spoil it for us. But on the most part, if we can look professional and show them that there's a, a revenue stream here and that we'll work hard for them, then they'll start scratching our backs more. Well, and, and I have a different uh, deal than most guys do because I'm on both ends of it where, where we run a pro staff and have guys that, that use our products and promote them and and uh, some of the guys we have worked out, and they've been really awesome. You know, Doc and Lynn Lang have just been outstanding for us. And, and Jason and Vicky Mathena, you just couldn't ask for anybody any better than that. And, uh, you know, uh, Gary Turner, he does a good job for us. And we've got a lot of other people that, that promote our products. And, and one of the stipulations is that you have to look and act the part. If somebody wants to, to uh, look at your thing, you know, Jason Jackson supports us. And, and uh, you, you want them, you want your stuff clean, and, and, and you use it so it's going to get to the point where it's uh, it's got things on it. But uh, then again, if somebody wants to see it, I call it fondling it. You know, when they want to play with them, they want to cast them, just let them do it. You know, if something happens to it, we'll just send you another. Just, you know, that's just how you do it. And, and that's the stuff that that, uh, that sets some of them apart from others. It's not always catching the hundred pound fish. It's it's promoting yourself and the products. And first thing that, that guys have to understand is that if they don't believe in that product one hundred percent, it doesn't no good to have it as a sponsor. Yeah, and that's a, that's a lot of times when we were um, getting the show going, we were getting approached by people that wanted to get their product out on national television, of course, and I'm always open to anybody that, that's been in the catfish before the show um, that's put in a lot of skin, as I call it, um, to take care of their product and stuff, but sometimes you just kind of have to be honest with them, and, and my, my way, I just kind of tell them it just doesn't fit my style of fishing because I want to be able to, to really talk you know, genuinely about about a product when I endorse it on the show, or if I'm in front of somebody doing a seminar or anything like that. Well, and that's right. I do some seminars too, and and uh, when I do them, if if I can't believe in uh, a hook, and and I I don't necessarily always use eagle call hooks, and and believe me, they don't support me in any way. But that's my favorite that I've found to this point is a 2022 Eagle Claw and, and uh, that's what I use in my demonstration because I trust it, I feel confident it's going to do the right job when I'm, when I'm fishing with the way I fish and, and uh, you know that's what I use and, and um, Power Pro Braid is another one, I, they have no way sponsor us or, or I have any affiliation with them at all but that's what I do use in my, in my uh, seminar simply because I trust it and I use it every day. Yeah. Exactly, and, and another thing while we're touching on sponsors real lightly here is whether you're a cat fisherman or bass fisherman or anything, um, when you come in at the at the starting level for a sponsor, um, just like you know Lawrence, um, I'm a firm believer in their product, and I can make those things just just whistle Dixie when I get them on the boat, and get them get them working right. Um, but I was with Lawrence for three years before I ever got moved up to the national pro staff. So don't think with any sponsor that you're just going to come in there and start collecting a paycheck right away. You really got to, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a two-sided relationship. You really got to put in the work and show them you're going to do anything and and really work for them before they're going to move you up. So you know, if you get some, if you get some discounts and some some slight product to begin with in the first year or two. 
don't think you're getting you know pushed by the wayside. Just keep working hard. It'll happen. Uh, you know, I'll need to touch on that for just a second with you, Jonathan. A few months ago, you know, every spring and in the fall, uh, Dave and myself and anybody that has anything to do with catfishing or any any sport get hit up for sponsorships for the beginning of the next year, you know, and, uh, you know, you just get slammed with all of them, and I try to look and read and, and, and choose if I need somebody out of that, but, you know, most of the, the sponsors that, that we do, um, I hand pick, you know, and, and go after them instead of them coming to me, but, you know, I made a post and, and an article that, that it's not, people not necessarily turning you down, just because they they don't take a guy the first round or the second round it just to me that's telling this guy you know I'm looking at you but I don't think you're ready to support my product now down the road you probably will make it but you're necessarily just not there yet and a lot of that is personal appearance a lot of it's the way that you make posts on Facebook and and any other media, the websites and forums and different things. Uh, it, it, do you agree with what I'm saying there? I do 100. percent You better really, you know, that's why I'm out there, guy. Y'all guys know me behind the scenes, and there's no telling what I might say at any given minute. But on social media, in the public, especially, I'm gonna just stay with social media. You've really got to keep it clean. And, and these guys, you know, when I go to the sponsors for the show, prospective sponsors for the show, that's the first thing I'll get comments on in the interview the next day or two when we get one is, hey, I saw those fish on your Facebook page. They, they'll they go through and they'll scan through, you know, as far as back as it'll let them go to see what kind of really person you are and how you, how you carry yourself and everything else. And all that means a, a lot to a sponsor. So, you know, you really got you really to promote yourself as a person pretty good first before you even think about getting on any products. And, and that's that's my, was my point exactly. And, and a lot of these guys, I would like to have them, but they're just not ready yet. They haven't grown to that professional uh, manner of professionalism, or however you want to put it. Uh, yeah. It's not that they won't be there someday, but right now, they just need a little more time on it to, to get there. Well, you were talking about getting slammed with with a lot of, of stuff at the beginning of the year. You know. At, for many years, I've been with Mercury before the show um, started, and, and Bass Pro and big sponsors. And I kind of learned from bass fishing. Bass fishing, you know, they have the classic right there at the beginning of the year. They have a tournament or two before the classic, and then it's the classic. So bass fishing starts pretty much, you know, January. Well, all of these guys, they start their say. Let's use Mercury as an example. They start all their, you know, filtering through all the applications in October of the year before. So that might be something where these guys need to start, you know, putting all their stuff together. And I know the tournament season ain't quite over for us in October, but put the stuff in there and kind of get in there a little bit earlier so you guys can kind of see what's going on and not, you know, be at the top of the stack and not in the middle of the stack. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And, and uh, you know, there if, if there's hundreds of people that I would love to, to be able to support, but there is a limit to what anybody can do. And it's not just me, it's everybody else. There's, there's a an end that you have to stop at some point, but uh, uh, my, my whole my whole point with that article was that, that there's a lot of guys out there that will be where they want to be right now. They'll be there, but it's going to take them a year or two or three to get there because you don't just jump on the scene of catfishing or bass fishing or, crop or whatever it is and, and go up and say, well, I'm so-and-so and I want to be on your your, I want to support your product, and, and you just don't get it right away. You have it's a proven thing. You've got to make sure that you are professional and, and you account yourself the same way. And, and I've, I've approached some of these big guys that, that I thought that would do me a good job and, and been turned down. And I actually uh, was heartbroken over a couple of them. One of them was a pretty good friend of mine, and he just didn't want to get tied into a to a deal like that, and uh, I was pretty let down about that. And that's a couple other guys that were big deals uh, turned me down a few years ago, and and I was a little disappointed in that. But you know that's part of it too. You got to be able to accept that uh, the same way. Uh, you know, it, everybody doesn't like it, the same things too. But my the one thing that, that ha they have to believe in what you have or what they're using of yours. If they don't believe in it, there's no way they can promote it. Uh, the way it needs to be done. Yeah, and you you try to try to use your sponsor's product beforehand before you go ask them for a sponsorship because they want to they want to you know be knowledgeable about the product a little bit, not coming in there 
you know, raw and just saying, hey, if you give me this, and I'll try it and I'll promote it to the best of my ability. Like you said, you got to really, you know, know what's going on with their product line and, and show them that you, you know, you can promote them genuinely and not just doing it for the free gift or the free free product. That's exactly right. And, and uh, you know, Jason and Vicki Mathena, uh, they, they use some of our stuff and, and, uh, I had the privilege of fishing with uh, Vicky and Cindy in the boat here at a tournament a month or so ago, and uh, absolutely had a wonderful time. And uh, I just noticed that Cindy made a, a post on here to add a wonder about not grabbing uh, Vicky's rod. Now, you know, Vicky is pretty particular about who gets that rod. She wasn't watching, and I grabbed it up and caught a fish on it, and I thought she was going to take it away from him and beat me. <laughs> But you know, I know earlier before the show we talked that you he was going to try to get up and fish with uh, with Vicky and Jason, and and that would be an outstanding show. I hope that you get to make that happen. Uh, you will never be in a boat with finer people than they are. I promise you that. Well, let me tell you something. I I met him for the first time at the Monsters on the Ohio, and you think it's bad for you guys sitting down? That guy looks like he's about 27 feet tall. So I know not to go in front of him or his. Or his mom to, to grab anything out of that boat, buddy. <laughs> Jason uh, was up here the other day, and, and uh, the first time that he come up and we visited, his mother said, if you have anything that you uh, worry about getting broke, do not give it to Jason. Uh, <laughs> and, and the first thing that happened was he, he, he used went in the other room to visit the little boy's room and, and uh, broke something in there. And I said, this is the man for me, you know. I'm just telling you. <laughs> If it can be broke, he can do it, and, and that's what we're after is, is somebody give honest evaluations on the products to make sure they're uh, as good as we think they are. Well, you know, before we get off topic, before we close the show up here, I just want to give a, a big shout-out to, you know, to Bink and Janet Fox for their, their big win the, a couple of weeks ago at the Cabela's. I saw that on Facebook, and I was busy. I didn't really have time to comment on it, but, you know, those are, those are, that's a good fishing team right there, and I'm, I'm proud of them. Oh, they've done an outstanding job, and those are some of the finest people that you ever want to meet. Um, I, I just, I'm looking really forward to, to uh, hopefully we get ahead of them in the Monsters of the Ohio this year. I can't wait to see the Cardinals <laughs> hat on Janet. That's going to be the, that'll be the most fun that I could possibly have. <laughs> never, never bet against a woman, buddy. Be careful what you wish for, because you might be a cubby that day. Well, I'm telling, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I think told me on the phone here uh, not too long back that, that uh, she's done been on him and they'll have to be pre-fishing as much as they can because she is not wanting to wear that Cardinals hat. <laughs> Chuck, yeah, Jonathan. Yeah. Was there anything uh, you know not maximum cap fishing or sponsor related that you wanted to touch on before we go on to anything else or? Well, you know, just just the sponsors that are that are on the show already. You know, Sea Arc and and Lawrence and, and David Ashby and Driftmasters. You know, Dave Baynard over there, Driftmaster Rod Holders. You know, all the all the people that have come in and taken a chance on on, on this fat boy from Alabama to, to really promote catfishing and, and get their products out there. I appreciate it. And you know, it's just it's just one of those things where we start at this level and we get it out there. I don't expect to be Duck Dynasty or Uncle Si or anything, but I'm telling you, if we can get a portal to show the world <laughs> what we do it, um, big things are to come for the whole sport, and that's, that's what I'm wanting to do. Um, and, you know, just promote CPR in general, because like you said earlier, we had that, that segment of our episode when, when I filmed with you that we just sat in the boat while we were waiting on the rods to, to, to start bouncing, and, and we really talked about conservation and, and what it means to our sport. And that's another thing. If, if you're going to CPR, and I'm not going to get on my soapbox because I eat my plenty and my share of fish, but, you know, it's just nothing over the 10-pound over the mark that I keep. But anyhow, um, if you're going to hold up a fish on social media, keep your fingers out of the gills. Please, it's killing me. But if you're talking about your CPR and, our, CPR and a fish and you you got your hand up in his gills because you're too scared to hold him by the mouth, get you some grips and gloves, something, because it just kills me. And I'm not the, I'm not the catfish police, but please, just... Keep your fingers out of the gills and, and let them swim another day. Good advice. All right, guys, we're fixing to have to wrap it up. we got a bad storm coming up uh, in the area where our server is. And if it gets knocked out, we're going to lose this whole show. So um, I'm, i got one last question for Jonathan. Make it quick. I just want to know, what's your most memor uh, memor <laughs> memorable uh, 
a fishing trip you've had, uh, it being a tournament or uh, being off with family, friends, or whatever? Um, Cindy and I, when we were in Georgia, we did an article for Georgia Outdoor News magazine. We got on Clark's Hill, um, got to fishing, got to, you know, caught all the bait, showed the guy how to do everything, got our first rods out, caught a flathead catfish, and we looked up and a storm came up on us. And um, long story short, we got caught in a tornado during that, during that, um, you know, that, that article. And it was probably, I'll never forget it, with the... The, the wind was blowing so high, the waves were so big, they were about to turn my boat over. I couldn't go parallel to them, so I just had to put them at my back, and we beached the boat into some sand, and it just beached it so hard with the motor trimmed up and no propulsion but the wind that we had to wait the next day to get Sito to pull us out of there, and they almost couldn't get us out of there. That's how hard the wind was blowing. So just be safe when you're on the water and pay attention to that weather because, man, that was a, that the, the, the pucker factor was 10-plus that day. I allow... Um you ready to give your closing statement? Uh, yeah, just uh, give me just one second here, and I will go ahead with, with Paul or somebody, and I'm going to get my stuff up so I may not make any mistakes. You, you, got, you ready, Chris? Yeah, I can go ahead. All right, uh, everybody. We got uh, advertising space still available on the website, catfishweekly.com. Um, $30 for three months, $50 for six months. Um, if you don't have an ad, we could probably make you up one to stick in there. Um, also, remember about the giveaway that I talked about earlier. Uh, any just any catfish, post picture with Catfish Weekly sign. Uh, the giveaway will be the end of June. It will be two 50-pound uh, scales, uh, electric or digital scales. The... Uh, we're going to buy Paul some cough drops. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, I, I, again, I want to thank Jonathan for coming on the show. Um, you know, he, me, me and him and all the guys talked a little bit beforehand, and he and he's kind of on board with us with what we're trying to do as far as uh, being uh, non-political. You know, anybody across the board, no matter what sponsors they use or whatever, we, we're just coming together for the sport of catfishing to to enjoy it, share it with each other, you know, have a good time, cut loose, you know. He's a big fan of Runny Doo Doo, so he's probably going to have him on Max. <laughs> <laughs> that that was that probably wouldn't go over so good on national TV, but who knows? You know? No, it would work. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's. Uh, I think that's. Besides that, we got a, a tournament on. I think it is May 29th or no May 31st. May 31st, uh, Extreme Catfishing is having the day tournament out of Troy, Indiana. I believe it's going to be at seven o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock in that time frame. But you can look them up on Facebook. Uh, then after the day tournament, ICA is having theirs at New Albany. I'm going to be doing both. I'll do the, the day tournament at Extreme and then go to the New Albany and do the ICA tournament. Uh, I believe that one starts at 7 o'clock at night and goes till 7 in the morning. So I'll be doing a lot of fishing that time. But uh, I think that I, I think that's it for me. I'm ready now, Chuck. Hello? Yes, go ahead, Lyle. Okay. Uh, I wanted to remind everybody that uh, coming up uh, the 24th of May, uh, Nauvoo, Illinois, we're having a Twisted Cat Outdoor Fishing Tournament. It should be a great turnout. Um, looking forward to seeing everybody up there. It's going to be a, a really good, fun time. It's all going to be north of the Keokuk Dam, so it'll basically be a Channel Cat Tournament. and. Uh, uh, it's just going to be a lot of fun. Hundred dollar entry, uh, launch time to seven, and, and uh, weigh in starts at three, just like all the tournaments. Um, for those of you that have not heard about it, May 31st in uh, Burlington, Iowa, we're having a benefit tournament for Calvin Myers. Uh, we have an outstanding bunch of support from uh, everyone from Twisted Cat Outdoors. Uh, we're giving away rods. Uh, Brad Kilpatrick, Kansas City Catfish, is sending over three fishing reels for it. 
this is a 50-50 tournament to, to help uh, Calvin and Annie with uh, the expense of, of his cancer treatments and driving back and forth from uh, north of Quincy, Illinois to St. Louis. And uh, uh, any of you that know Calvin, he's an outstanding guy and, and he's a stand-up guy for our sport. Uh, we need to support this and, and help them guys out any way we can. So if you can make it May 31st, uh, uh, Burlington, Iowa will be a great time. And, and the next day they're going to have a bunch of raffles and uh, auction off a just unbelievable amount of stuff uh, from all over the country. So um, if you can make that, that'd be great. The next thing that I wanted to talk to you about is June 14th in uh, LaGrange, Missouri. The Jack and Jill tournament sponsored by Mark Wayne Casino, guaranteed $3,000 first place. Uh, still getting a lot of entries coming through the mail. Uh, a lot of people sending messages and stuff. You must have one male, one female in a boat. You are allowed up to three fishermen per boat. $100 entry fee. Uh, there's going to be booths set up across from the casino. Uh, the day before the tournament, they're giving away a uh, free meal. There are some other things that are in the works right now that, that will entice some people to be there. It's going to be a great time, and it's a great payout for our area. So any of you that can make that, uh, bring your wife, your girlfriend, your daughters, uh, come up and join us. Uh, we're going to have a real good time up there. Jonathan, I can't thank you enough for being on the show with us this week. We've really enjoyed having you and looking forward to Maximum Catfish and Show when that gets going. Uh, you're doing a wonderful thing for, for helping us with the uh, spot, uh, the uh, conservation of catfish, and, and it means a lot to all of us that, that you're supporting it the, the way we do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very adamant about that. I try to stay off my soapbox on the show, but... I appreciate you guys having me, and and you know I'll do do whatever I can to kind of be the voice of conservation for our our fisheries. Well, you're the man. Thank you so much again, Chuck. You got anything, Paul? Yeah, just uh, thank you for showing up tonight and and doing the show with us. And you probably stay a little longer, but I, I think I'm gonna get some nasty weather here shortly. So. Do appreciate you, you, Jonathan, doing the show with us tonight. All right, thanks, guys. All right, Jonathan, I want to thank you for being on. It was great having you on. Um, I'd like to let everybody know about the Alabama Catfish Trail Tournament coming up this Saturday, May 17th. We're going to be launching out of Scottsboro City Park ramp. Um, the weigh-in's going to be during the uh, Scottsboro uh, Catfish Festival. Um, we're going to be launching at uh, takeoff around 7 a.m. Weigh-in's going to be at uh, 3 p.m. I hope to see everybody there. Um, if everybody's got nobody got anything else to say, I guess we're out of here for the night. And real quick, Chuck, is I'll be going to see our tournament that weekend of your tournament down here on Gunnersville. So I will give away waypoints on Gunnersville for zebra cakes. Um, if anybody wants to. <laughs> Anybody wants some good waypoints, just let me know. I'll give them to you because I'm low on zebra cakes. My wife's put me on a diet. Okay. Yeah. We're talking about going down there to the, uh, yeah. the Moss for Ohio. So all i got to do is figure out how to get a ride and end up with the rest of the guys up there. And i got to tell everybody, until I see you again, stay out of my spot. <laughs>